Welcome back. So we're using the singular value decomposition to compute the eigenfaces. So I have a large library of pictures of human faces arranged as column vectors of this big matrix X. And we're using the SVD to get eigenfaces, to decompose this library of human faces into a set of kind of orthogonal eigenfaces that somehow capture the relevant features in a lower dimensional, uh, in a lower dimensional way. Okay, so we've just computed this. We loaded this data matrix X from the Yale, data, uh, Yale Faces database. We've computed its SVD. The left singular vectors, these column vectors of the matrix U, can be, they have the same height, the same, the same uh, size as one of my reshaped faces, the column vector of X. And so I can take those left singular vectors and reshape them into these eigenfaces. So that's what we did. Now what I'm going to show you is how I can use these eigenfaces to approximate a human face that was uh, a new human face. So I built this library on the first 36 people. Now I'm going to take images uh, of the 37th person that I did not use to train this uh, decomposition. And I'm going to see how well these eigenfaces, this eigenspace, this eigenface space represents that 37th person. Okay, so I'm going to take that person's face uh, and it's going to be a column vector X. Okay, it's going to be a tall skinny vector that's been essentially reshaped to be a 32,000 dimensional vector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to project it into my eigenface space. So I'm going to take the first R columns of U, my first R eigenfaces. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to project X into that eigenface space. So literally what I do is I take my tall skinny matrix X and I multiply it by my basis of eigenfaces UR transposed. So I take UR and I knock it on its side and I multiply it by X. And what I get out are essentially the coefficients or the fingerprint of that person X's face in that coordinate system. So it's the mixture of those R eigenfaces I would have to add up to get that person's face. So projecting X into the eigenface space, I go from a big, tall, n-dimensional measurement down to R numbers that tell me the mixture of those R eigenfaces I would have to add up to reconstruct X. And then if I want to reconstruct an approximation of X in that space, I would just multiply it again. I would take that linear combination of eigenfaces. So let me just walk through this again. If I just took x times ur transpose, I would get this vector, I sometimes call it alpha. It's a little r dimensional vector of exactly the mixture of eigenfaces, the first r eigenfaces that x has. And then if I took that mixture and I mixed up those eigenfaces, I took that linear combination of ur, I would reconstruct an approximation of x using that rank r approximation. Okay, so this would be, uh, let's call this x approximate, x tilde. Okay, this is equal to something that has the same size as x, but it's the projection of x onto the first r eigenfaces. Okay, and that's what we're going to do here. What we're going to do, and I want to show you how this person's face gets reconstructed if I keep the first 25, 50, 100 eigenfaces, the first 200, 400, 800, and so on. So for different rank, uh, different numbers of eigenfaces I'm going to use to approximate this person's face, we're going to see how accurate uh, that reconstruction is. And we're going to compute the reconstructed face. Again, I'm going to, I subtracted out the average face, so I have to add back the average face. And then I'm going to take this projection of my test face into the first R eigenfaces times the first R eigenfaces. And I'm going to plot this. And you're going to see what it looks like. Uh, and we can, we can work through it. Okay. So this is my image of person 37. Good. This is person 37 right here. And then these are the approximations of increasing rank, 25, 50, 100, 200. If I keep more and more eigenfaces, if, I, if my, my um, alpha vector gets larger and larger, containing more information about these eigenfaces, you can see that pretty quickly his face does in fact converge to the true face. 
Now, it's important to point out that we did not use this individual's uh, images to in the training data X to train these libraries. These were trained on the first 36 people. This is the 37th person. Uh, at rank 25, it doesn't look anything like him. It just looks, again, like that kind of generic average face blobby face. Uh, and as you start increasing, I would say around 200 is where you start seeing some semblance of the, the same kind of uh, facial features and structure of this person. And by 400 or 800, I think you'd be able to pick out this person in a lineup. You'd be able to tell that that really is this person. Okay, so remember, the original image had about 32,000 pixels. That was a lot of information. And now, in this eigenface space, we only need the first 400 bits of information. We only need this, this 400 tall alpha vector that tells kind of the, the unique fingerprint of this face in that library. Now, of course, if I wanted to use this for compression or for encoding or analysis, I'd have to store that library. We'd all have to have a copy of it if we wanted to use this to decode that person's face in terms of this compressed representation. But if we all agreed on that library, we could do a much, much better job of compressing the information down from a, you know, 32,000 pixels down to a few hundred coefficients in this alpha vector. So I think this is kind of a fun example uh, of what you can do with the eigenfaces. You can use it uh, to show that the structure of human faces is inherently low dimensional. Okay? Out of those 32,000 possible pixels that could make up a face, you know, people's faces all have very similar patterns. We're not just random, you know, you can't just randomly assign those 32,000 pixels. There's structure. We have eyes and noses and mouths and things like that. Okay, and so those patterns is why you can get away with this massive uh, compression of information. But when I was building this example, uh, I started thinking it would be fun to see how this orthogonal space of eigenfaces could be used to approximate a different image that was not a, even a person's face. So remember, the columns of U are orthonormal, and if I kept enough of them, I would actually span a high-dimensional vector space, right? I'd span a 2,400-dimensional subspace uh, of image space using these orthogonal, uh, orthogonal basis vectors or eigenfaces. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a picture of my dog, Mort, and we're going to see if we can represent Mort in our eigenface space. So exactly the same um, issue, uh, oh, dog, let's call it Mort. Yeah, it's, this is a smaller cropped square version of my dog. It's called Mort. And I think this is just fascinating. So all that we've changed, we're still using uh, the eigenfaces to represent our images. But the only thing that's changed here is now instead of trying to reconstruct a human face, I'm trying to reconstruct a picture of my dog Mort. Okay, and so you can see at 25 rank and 50 rank and 100 rank, it just looks like a weird person, right? It doesn't look like a person or a dog exactly, but it's more like a person. But then something interesting happens. There's kind of this phase change as you increase the rank more and more. Remember those singular values were decaying uh, pretty slowly. And at some point, as you increase the rank of the approximation, the, the subspace more and more and more, you start to see that a dog emerges. Now, it's not a perfect representation of my dog because uh, this is only spanning 2,400 um, kind of dimensions of this 32,000 dimensional image space, but it's pretty remarkable. It's 1,600 modes kept. That's clearly a picture of a dog, not just a dog, my dog. Okay, that's Mort. And so it's really remarkable that this, uh, this eigenface space, because it's orthogonal, uh, it actually captures a lot of features that you can use to reconstruct other things, which is, I mean, I, I'm not recommending you ever do this. It's just interesting uh, that you can do this. And you can also do this uh, even, not even a picture of an animal. You can do this with a picture of a coffee cup. Okay, you can reconstruct. Uh, this is some latte art that uh, Nathan Kutz made. This beautiful cappuccino here. And you can see, again, as you increase the rank of the approximation, the space that you're using to express um, this image, as you include more and more and more modes, I mean, it's not a perfect representation. There's issues. You don't see the, um, like the pattern in the, in the foam, but you can tell that it's a coffee cup with a spoon on a plate. Okay, so very interesting. You can use this eigenface space to represent your data um, and to essentially represent at least 
human faces using a much, much less information, namely what mixture of those eigenfaces for that particular person. Okay, so next we're going to use this for image classification, which is a really powerful uh, use of, of eigenfaces. Okay, thank you.